This is week two of the second quarter, and we're going to talk about chemical reactions. But before we do that, I wanted to give a brief review of last week's material, because generally people have some difficulty with that material, and also because it is extremely important to keep that material in mind as we talk about this next group of set of information. And so let's briefly go over the oxidation number rules again. Remember the first rule is the specific oxidation number rule. And that states that elements in certain families regularly have the same oxidation number. Now you understand when we talk about families, we're talking about things like the 1A element elements, which are called the alkaline family or alkaline metal family, the 2A elements, which are called the alkaline earth family, the, five, the 7A elements, which are called the halogens, and so forth. And it, it tends to occur that the, these various families have the same or very similar oxidation numbers. So as I said, the alkaline earth or alkaline metals frequently have a um, oxidation number of plus one, the alkaline earth metals plus two, the halogens minus one when bonded with metals and plus one when bonded with other nonmetals. Oxygen is always minus two except when bonded with fluorine. And the rest of the group A halogens are generally minus one when bonded with metals, but they can have other oxidation numbers when bound together with a non-metal such as oxygen. So let's again look at some practice problems in this area. And we'll give the oxidation number for each compound or ion. So let's start with this. <clears throat> Get out a piece of paper and write this formula down, BaCO3. And remember that Ba is a 2A element, therefore it has an oxidation number of plus two. It's also a metal, so it has an oxidation number of plus two. And oxygen has an oxidation number of minus two. And remember that, that compounds like this, the oxidation numbers have to add up to zero. So you have plus two, plus whatever carbon is, plus minus two times three, or a minus six, has to equal zero. So plus two, minus six, plus something equals zero, and you can easily figure out that that something has to be plus four. So barium has an oxidation number of plus two, carbon plus four, and oxygen minus two. Now, when you have an ion, a polyatomic ion like this, you remember that this has to add up to equal the charge of the ion, which in this case is minus two. Oxygen, again, is, is minus two. So it's three minus two is minus six. So whatever sulfur is plus a minus six has to equal a minus two. And again, if you do the math there, you'll see that sulfur in this case has to be plus four. So plus four minus, or plus a minus two times three, or minus six, equals a minus two. H2SO4, hydrogen in this case is a plus one, oxygen is a minus two. So you have two times a plus one, plus four times a minus two, plus whatever sulfur is, has to be zero. So two times plus one minus two times four, or eight, so plus two minus eight, plus whatever sulfur is, is zero. In this case, sulfur has to be a plus six. K2Cr2O7, K is a 1A element, it's a plus one. Oxygen is a is minus two. Seven times minus two is minus fourteen plus 
2 times plus 1 leaves a minus 12. So 2 times whatever chromium is has to be a minus 12, has to counterbalance a minus 12, so it all adds up to 0. So chromium in this case has to be plus 6. And the last example, NaC2H3O2, <clears throat> Na is a plus 1, O2 is a minus 2. Now hydrogen here is reacting with non-metals. So in this case, it can be either a plus 1 or a minus 1, depending on the electronegativity. I know and I can tell you that hydrogen has a lesser electronegativity than oxygen, and so it gives up electrons to oxygen. So in this case, it's a plus 1. So you have plus 1 for sodium, 3 times plus 1 for hydrogen, and 2 times minus 2 for oxygen. So if you put all those together, you end up with a 0. So in this case, carbon has to be 0. If, on the other hand, you said that hydrogen were a minus 1, then 3 times minus 1 plus 2 times minus 2 is minus 7, plus 1 from the sodium is minus 6, so carbon would have to be a plus 3. And in cases like this, if it's not clear, sometimes I will accept either of those answers if they make sense. Now let's briefly, briefly review naming. Remember that binary compounds are compounds that have two elements. They are generally ionic compounds. The first name is the name of the cation in the ionic compound. The second name is the name of the anion with IDE suffix. So for example, sodium is the cation, fluorine is the anion, so this is sodium fluoride. Calcium is the cation. Oxygen is the anion. So this is calcium oxide. If the metal has more than one oxygen state, then a Roman numeral is used to differentiate which oxygen state, oxidation state we're talking about. So for example, as I gave the last time, if you have iron as a plus 2, then it's iron 2 chloride. And if you have iron as a plus 3, then it's iron 3 chloride. Now, other type of binary compounds are the covalent binary compounds. And these are na named in a similar way, but the significant difference is, is that sometimes there is more than one possibility with the covalent compound. So for example, in this case, again, you name it the same way. You name the first compound, it just give its name, and the second ends in IDE. But if there's more than one possible compound, then you use Latin prefix, pre prefixes to differentiate. So for example, there are two possible combinations of oxygen and carbon. One is carbon dioxide, because it has two oxygens. One is carbon monoxide. And here are the Latin prefixes that I asked you to memorize last week. You'll also remember the polyatomic compounds, and these are compounds that contain more than two atoms. And there are polyatomic ions, which are ions that move, that are made up of several atoms that move together as a single unit. The first name is the same as our previous naming. So you just name the, the first part by its name is given in the table, periodic table. And the second name is the name of the polyatomic ion. And the only exception to this is ammonium, which is the only positive cationic polyatomic ion that we will be working with. So here we have the carbonate polyatomic ion, so it's potassium carbonate. 
nitrate polyatomic ion combined with sodium is sodium nitrate. This is not sodium nitrogen trioxide. This is sodium nitrate. This is the sulfate polyatomic ion combined with barium, so barium sulfate. So here you can give the name or the formula or both depending on what I give you. So here is potassium bromide, the combination of, excuse me, potassium and bromine. This would be K is the, is the symbol for potassium. BR is the symbol for bromine. Potassium is a 1A element, so it's a plus one. Bromine is a 7A element combined with a metal, so it's a minus one. The least common multiple between those two is one. So this is KBr. And it's called potassium bromide. This is a combination of calcium with the nitrate polyatomic ion. So this is called calcium nitrate. The formula for lithium phosphate, phosphate is PO4. It has a charge of minus three. Lithium, Li, is a 1A element, so it's in that first row column on the left of the periodic table. The least common multiple between those two is three. One goes into three three times, so you have lithium with a subscript three, and then PO4 representing the phosphate. This is the combination of aluminum with the sulfate polyatomic ion. So this is aluminum sulfate. It is not dialuminum sulfate. It's just aluminum sulfate. And then magnesium plus sulfur. In this case, it's IDE. So this is a binary compound. So it's Mg and S. S has a it's in the 6A area right under oxygen, so it's a minus two. Magnesium is a plus two. The least common multiple is two. So the, so the formula for this is MgS. Now, with that review, let's move on to talk about chemical changes. When a solid separates from a liquid mixture, this is a type of chemical change. When a gas is produced by some means other than evaporation, this is a type of chemical change. When a substance changes color and that color change is permanent, this is a type of chemical change. When the temperature of a substance changes, this can occur in a chemical change. And other things can occur. Light can be produced. Sound can actually be produced. Other forms of energy can be produced. These can all occur as a result of a chemical change. In order to express chemical changes, we write them down in the form of chemical equations. So a chemical equation is a shorthand using chemical formulas that we've been working on to show what happens in a chemical reaction or in a chemical change. All equations must obey the conservation of matter. So everything that's on the one side of the equation has to appear on the other side of the equation. The one side of the equation is called the reactants. The reactants are on the left side of the arrow that represents the chemical change occurring. And all the substances on the left side of that arrow are called reactants. On the other side of the arrow, on the right side, are the substances that are called the products. Everything, every atom that occurs in the reactants must show up on the product side. You can't have anything disappearing or else the conservation of, of matter is not preserved. 
Chemical equations are represented by writing a balanced equation. And by balancing, we mean that we have made sure that every atom that appears on the right side of the equation also appears on the left side of the equation. So we can start with a word equation, which tells you what happens, and then you write the formula for each of the chemical compounds, and then you end by making sure that everything on one side also occurs on the other side. So let's take a look at an example. I've given you here the word equation, which states that potassium chloride plus magnesium sulfide reacts together to produce potassium sulfide plus magnesium chloride. So first of all, you need to write down the chemical formulas for each of these species. So magnesium chloride is MgCl, and I'll come back and make sure that's correct in just a second. Magnesium sulfide, I'm sorry, that's potassium chloride. Let me start over here. Magnesium sulfide, Mg is magnesium, S is sulfide. Then there's an arrow that represents the chemical reaction occurring. And it produces potassium sulfide plus magnesium chloride. Potassium is plus one, chlorine is minus one, least common multiple is one, so that is correct as it is written. Magnesium is plus two, sulfur is minus two, so that is correct as it is written. Potassium is plus one, sulfur is minus two, the least common multiple is two. One goes into two two times, so you need a two here. Magnesium is plus two, chlorine is minus one, again the least common multiple is two. One goes into two two times, so you need a two there. So that's the formulas written down. Now, you have two potassiums here and two chlorines here, but you only have one of each here, so you put a coefficient two in front of this to say you have two of these molecules combining with one of these molecules to produce one of these and one of these. Now, everything is balanced. This is a balanced equation. 